Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets for the Game Boy Color. Now I appreciate it's been a little while, but I do believe we've just gone to collect most potent potions from the library. After which time, of course, we have to go play Quidditch, which I know you've all been waiting for with bated breath. Uh, I will admit that my track record with the Quidditch matches in this game so far has been shit. So, uh, if we lose to Slytherin, then my deepest apologies. Let's see what this random person has to say on the subject. Oh, well, that's very nice of you. Also, while we're here, let's check the progress of the House Cup. Hufflepuff is still in the lead! Come on, Hufflepuff. Okay, so, quit it, switch. Which I think is this way? Can't really remember. No, it's a bit further this way. Here we are. So there's nobody here apart from Oliver Wood. It's going to be an exciting game. They may have better brooms, but we have better players. Uh, whatever gives you that idea. And one of the Weasley twins joins in our conversation out of nowhere. No, oh, no, here they come. Referee shows up. Griffin decide, ready? Well, there's only four of us here, and there's meant to be seven, but, but why not? Let's go. Oh, Malfoy's turned up. The pre match banter. Right, here we go. Uh, I'm just going to remind myself of the controls. Right. Here we go. And immediately we're hit by a bludger. That bludger is out of control, says Harry immediately. It'll hurt someone, but if I stop, it'll count as a forfeit. This has always confused me. There seems to be no circumstance in which you can forfeit a, a Quidditch match or declare it void. I mean, you look at book two, he's being chased around by a clearly tampered with bludger, but they can't stop the game, it'd count as a forfeit, and I didn't understand this. Surely the match should be void, it's clearly unfair. Anyway, such is life, so off we go. Me desperately trying to avoid this fucking bludger. It's actually really annoying, it's just... Go on, Fred and George, come on out. Whoa! As I managed to catch it! I'm awesome! We win! That was very quick. Arg! How he says, as he falls off his boom for absolutely no reason, and the bludger was all the way back there. Game over! Mr. Potter, are you alright? Do I fucking look alright? Fortunately, Gilderoy Lockhart comes to the rescue. As does irritating Gryffindor Colin Creevy wanted to take a picture. No need to take him to the hospital. I'll fix that arm of yours. And Lockhart's amazing magic vanishes all the bones from our arm. So that's good. Oh dear, that does happen sometimes. But at least the arm is no longer broken. Well, yes. So off we trot to the hospital wing. To regrow bones. As we do, here turns up Dobby for his third appearance, I think. Sometimes Harry Potter wished he hadn't, says Harry, lapsing into the third person in irritation. 
By the way, why do you wear that pillowcase? It's a sign of Dobby's enslavement to his master. Dobby can be free only if Dobby's master gives Dobby clothes. Even a sock. <coughs> well, I just think that's wrong. Says the rather judgmental 12 year old. Why did kind Harry Potter come back here? Why didn't Harry Potter go home after Harry Potter missed the train? And Harry finally realises that he was uh, Dobby sealing the platform in a rather feeble attempt to keep Harry away from school. I mean, you know, I appreciate we solved the problem by getting there by flying car and crashing into a tree, but normal people would have just sent a letter. I'm sure the thing would have been resolved. You almost got Ron and me expelled. No, 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 mate. You did that. You. It was your idea, well, you and Ron's idea to go off flying in a car. That wasn't Dobby's fault. And Dobby reveals that the uh, rogue bludger was also his fault. Trying to injure Harry enough to be sent home from school. Bad things are to happen at Hogwarts. The terrible days of the Dark Lord are coming back. What does Voldemort have to do with this? Harry Potter broke his power and gave all house elves hope, but now that the Chamber of Secrets is open again... There is a Chamber of Secrets, says Harry, despite the fact we kind of... Well, he'd already jumped to that conclusion. It's been opened before. So Dobby, having divulged this information, starts slamming his head against the corner of the screen. And having divulged enough of the plot for now, Dobby leaves. Followed, well, uh, in his wake appears Dumbledore. Dragging along a rather unconscious looking Colin Greavy. Colin Creevy has been petrified. We believe he was on his way here to see Harry Potter. We examined his camera to see if he had taken a picture of his attacker, but it was melted. This means that the Chamber of Secrets is open, and even I don't know how. Time passes. And we reconvene in Moaning Myrtle's bathroom. Where Ron and Hermione have been brewing our magic potion of awesomeness. I'll never eat boneless chicken again. Harry updates his friends on the plot. We need to complete the potion and get a confession from Malfoy. Speaking of potions, isn't it time for Snape's class? So yes, we need to go to uh, the potions classroom in the dungeon, accompanied by Ronald and Hermione. So, let's go. And while we're passing the entrance hall, and while I remember, Let's get to let's get started on one of the game's side quests. If you remember, Professor Lockhart has indeed opened the Dueling Club, which I believe is situated down here, somewhere. Ah, yes. Now, in here, there are seven students from the seven different years of education, and you can duel the champions from each year and you get awarded items for each progressively difficult battle you defeat uh, until eventually you get a dueling trophy which does nothing and clogs up your inventory for the whole game. So let's see if we can beat a couple of those. Hi Howie, hi, I'm your first opponent. Let's duel! Unfortunately I can't inform myself about him so let's just try and set him on fire. Well, that was incredibly easy. Didn't expect it to be that easy. 
Ah, picking on first years. And for this, we get a wizard card. So, we go challenge the second year opponent. Well, uh, setting him on fireworks, let's try that again. Time for the ultimate emasculation victory as we attempt to finish them off with Flipendo Uno. These people are crap. Oh, we level up. Marvellous. And we go, another wizard card. I had remembered you got useful items, I must have been wrong. Oh well. See how far we can go. Third year student. Stay with the tried and tested tactic. Okay, I think we might be outmatched. We're using Incendio Uno, they're using what looks like Incendio Duo. That might even be a Trier spell. That one didn't look as good. Hmm, potions we have. Okay, we need to buy more potions. Um, I'm just going to let this person beat me and uh, go along to Fred and George's shop. So if we're going to buy more anyway, I'm going to drink that ground with more potion. Oh, it only gives you 100 stamina points. I had thought... I mean, is it... If we had the MP, given that she's not been using the stronger spells, then we could probably win. Except now she's used the stronger spell again and kills. Oh well. Oh, I'm mean, apparently get a full heal from that anyway. Which is kind of a shame, because now we've got to walk all the way up to the seventh floor. Uh, I'm going to try and remember where the bloody shortcuts are. Now I think there's one in the dungeons, which is where we're going anyway. Let's talk to this person again. I can't wait to get to potions class. Secret passage takes us up to the sixth floor. Oh, that's actually incredibly useful. Yo, sell me potions. Oh, they don't sell Grand Wigan World potions. They just sell overpriced equipment that I can't really afford. How am I supposed to get decent potions? The, the potion making system, which I actually quite liked from the previous game, is not in this game, so... I'll buy some Wigan World potions, but it's not like they're that much use. I've kind of outgrown them. I think... I may be wrong here, but I think there may be another shop on the ground floor, so let's check that one, but I'm maybe just making things up out of desperation. It's a decent way of acquiring healing items. Yes, I was right. What, what, what do you sell? Unfortunately, he just sells crap. That's all he sells! For fuck's sake. Alright, well, let's persist for now. Let's go learn how to brew potions. Well, this is a packed house. That's the potion storeroom, we say with an earshot of Snape. How are we going to sneak in there without being seen? Well, it occurs to me that you own an invisibility cloak. I got some of Fred's filibuster fireworks, one for each of us. 
We can use them to create a distraction and sneak in. Potter, you and your hangers on, stop milling about. Take your seats. Where's the rest of the class? Seriously. Today, although I know the odds are against me, I will attempt to teach you to be a swelling potion. I do like Snape. For the benefit of those of you who can read, I will illustrate the potion formula on the blackboard. No! Say, get your voice down. And some decidedly pathetic fireworks go off. What happened? What is the meaning of this? I'd better stand here, looking at the wall with my back to the storeroom. So we leg it into his secret storeroom. Okay, we're in. Let's try and find the boom slang skin and bike horn as quickly as possible we can. I can't remember if we went into this room in the last game. If we didn't, though, it looks completely different, and it's certainly not a fucking dungeon. Oh. We found a bike horn horn. Who has dangerous creatures running about in their potion store? I'm surely these ingredients must be quite fragile. Uh, we could do the experience, so uh, let's fight. And we're fighting a bouncing skull. Doesn't actually look that dangerous. I mean, you know, it's a skull. Must be a pretty shit skull for that, man. We could really do leveling our spells up, but I just hate level grinding. Vermilius seems to work quite well on it, anyway. You know, it's enemy's goats, he's added a crap. Well, there we go. Proceed to the inexplicable maze that is Snape's storeroom. Encounter a spider. Surely it must be weak to incendio. So it would appear. No, I don't want to poison it. Oh, this fucking one backfires. Oh, this is far more damage, of course, when it backfires than when it actually hits. It's another shitty skull. Let's try electrocuting it this time for a bit of variation. Okay, that seems to do it quicker. That is incredibly easy. I mean, are we over leveled or something? One levels up. And another spider to insinuate. The minor levels up. This time we encounter a skull on a bat. Which is crap because of Harry's super cool side quest cloak thing. Possibly Harry's running out of MP. Oh, Vermilius does not work on bats. One her mind, you really need to level up their spells. Don't they? Not in the party often enough. I just love how Harry's, Harry's the uber tank at the moment because of that cloak. Spells do we know? Not a deal. Um, can we incinerate the bat? No. We have to electrocute it then, won't we? Well, they will. Harry's got no MP left, so he can just flip end of it. Hmm. 
No, stole a cross. Electrocuted. Wildlife preservation with the Harry Potter game. Then the fucking thing. Victory! Found a wig and well ground person, but Harry needs some more MP and level up after the next fight and save me potions. We found presumably the rest of the ingredients because we got to the end of the dungeon. He received Boomslang skin, which this time is not in his office on the wall. Get out of here. You know, I'm really not convinced our plan is watertight. There's a large door from Snape's classroom leading off to the secret storerooms. It's that door we're going to come in through. Won't it be kind of obvious and fucking hell one's useless? And you know, the grand distraction provided from those fireworks really wasn't as impressive as it was cracked up to be, so... Really gonna be that useful? And how it levels up as well. Anyway, potion ingredients in two. We I can't be asked to fight this last one, so I'm just going to wait for the encounter to disappear. We re-enter Snape's classroom. Apparently unnoticed. Settle down, all of you. Even though there's only three people in the room who just only re have only just re-entered it. I am perfectly aware what happened. That was a pack. If I could prove who did it, I would make sure they were expelled. Class for today is cancelled. You may all leave quickly. Mr. Potter, I want to speak to you. I can't prove you caused the disturbance in my class just now, but I suspect you did. I think that a wizard duel and dueling club between you and Draco Malfoy would be benefit your training immensely, Potter. Report to the dueling club near the entrance hall immediately. Yes, it's time for a plotline duel. Snape, who just generally loves causing shit to go wrong, has pitted two worst enemies against each other and allowed them to cast spells at each other. I can't imagine this could possibly go wrong. Can you? And so we return to the dueling club that we've only just visited. Fortunately, we just leveled up, so let's go fuck up Malfoy. Uh, of course, we can't go three on one, so the other two leave the group. Well, there they all are, and Lockhart too. Let's get this over with. Dueling Club, allow me to introduce two of the most talented young wizards at Hogwarts. Sorry, who are they? Everyone knows who they are, Gilderoy. Just let it begin. Bit of banter there. Duel! Apparently, my speed is faster than Malfoy, who looks decidedly creepy there in his little sprite. So, in these series of games, the Game Boy Color ones, I mean, I think this is the second time we've fought Malfoy. First time was a piece of piss, let's see if he's improved. I can inform myself about him. Hmm, let's see what that does. 
If it does nothing, I'll be annoyed. He responds with... something. Reasonably effective. No, it did nothing. No, you can't get information on Dokemon. Oh, the game just lets you mislead yourself and waste a turn. Oh, well, let's try and set the little fucker on fire. Clearly not the right idea. I'm doing very well here, aren't I? Uh, well, so I'm trying to electrocute him. Fucking hell, he's risen to that and all. Rather Milius? The fuck? Well, I'm failing utterly because he's resistant to everything under the sun. Let's at least find out what we can hit him with before we lose. The only thing left is Flipendo. Is that really the solution? That does a bit. Jesus Christ, how strong is he? Okay, plan B. Well, it was going to spam Wiganwell potions, but they heal less than a single attack of his. Anyway, plan B is to poison him. And then just spam healing items. But given that, that healing items are shit, we've lost. Anyway, the outcome of the fight doesn't actually matter, but fucking hell, how we... we go from the ridiculously easy fights in Sleep Storm to that. As I say, it doesn't actually have any bearing on the game. Same thing happens either way, and Malfoy, as you do, conjures a serpent. Which must be a fairly advanced level spell for a 12 year old to cast. And it rears its head at a Hufflepuff student, Justin Finch Fletchley. It's going for Justin Finch Fletchley, Ron informs us. Harry runs up to it and instructs it to leave Justin alone. And it complies and disappears. Are you alright, Justin? I never believed it was you, but it must be, Justin replies and runs off. I declare the jeweler draw. Lockhart says, and makes a quick and hasty retreat. You're more versatile than expected, Potter. And from all this, we learn a new spell. Exactly how we've suddenly learned Expelliarmus, the famous disarming charm, and possibly the most known incantation from the entire books, is not entirely clear. But anyway, a fairly significant plot event has occurred there. As Ron and Hermione explain, Harry is a parcel mouth and can talk to snakes in parcel tongue their own language. Harry replies he didn't think this was uncommon, uh, but it's revealed that parcel mouth, uh, parcel tongue, was a hallmark of the fairly untrustworthy wizard Salazar Slytherin, and therefore naturally. Being able to do this marks Harry out as the heir of Slytherin, so spookiness and general, yeah. I've got to find Justin Finch Fletchley and convince him I wasn't egging on that snake, Harry resolves. And so off we go to search for him. You challenged Draco Malfoy and got beaten up. But still. So we go looking for Finch Fletchley. There he is. Uh, but unfortunately he runs up the stairs. So this won't look suspicious at all. Let's chase after him. Oi, Finchy. This is possibly the first time in the books that a Hufflepuff character is actually introduced. Well, actually, no, there's, um, there's his mate Ernie Macmillan before that, but I don't think he's introduced in the book. 
Anyway, yeah, found Justin. Found Justin and nearly headless Nick, Gryffindor House ghost. Both of whom have been petrified. Well, Nick, being a ghost, has just kind of been turned into black smog, but apparently that counts. I love the fact that you've still got the general, generic, cheerful background music here. It really takes away from the tone of the scene, rather. Really. Peeves the poltergeist floats along. And reports the whole thing to the school in rather alarmist terms. So, attracted by the commotion, along comes McGonagall. What is that hubbub and tomfoolery? Oh, that's got to be the best line in the whole game. Silence, Peeves. The rest of you be about your business. Potter, come with me. So, we follow McGonagall to the mysterious room on the third floor. Which is, of course, the office of Albus Dumbledore. But to get there, you have to go through this corridor infested with monsters, which I certainly don't recall from the book. Uh, let's find out what this statue is weak to, because I can't remember. Oh, bugger the bloody thing can paralyze us. And he's doing so repeatedly, as is the other one. Can I have a turn? Finally! Right. It is a paladin, vulnerable to nothing but resistant to certain things. Oh, uh, fuck this, I can't be asked. Let's just go see Dumbledore. Jesus Christ, is this how the man gets to work? Fucking everything here seems to paralyse us. It's just a fucking loop. I'm never going to turn. And burn out this rat. No, it's bloody resistant, isn't it? This one can hardly even do any damage, it just constantly fucking paralyzes us. Can we electrocute it, maybe? Sort of. Not Vermilius. No. Getting out of MP again. Just finding out what it's weak to. I'm going to try Flipendo Unoing it. See if it's weak to that. And if it is, we can start to use the one that actually costs MP. It does damage. God, this is the longest fight ever. Don't want to fight. He's let me to his fucking office. Almost there, and I'm just going to run from this. I can't be asked. Oh, 
Here we go. Dumbledore's office. Currently inhabited by... The Sorting Hat. And by Dumbledore's pet phoenix, Forks. Which is in the presence of being immolated. Hello, Harry. Dumbledore says oddly cheerfully. Professor, your bird caught fire. About time to Fawkes is a phoenix. It's in his nature to burn up and be reborn from his own ashes. His gold and red plumage should grow back soon. Phoenixes have many powers and are very faithful. When he returns to full strength, he'll be able to carry amazingly heavy loads. His tears have healing powers. That's nice, I don't give a shit. Now, Harry, I want you to know I don't think you're behind the attacks in Hogwarts. Is there anything else you want to tell me? Anything at all? And this is where Harry doesn't tell him anything, and I kind of don't understand why. There seems to be a certain... obstinance and resistance to telling a figure of authority anything that's in Harry's nature. It gets quite irritating. You know, he's basically offering him the chance to tell him anything, in complete confidence, with no consequences. That is the implication... That is what... That is what he, he, he seems to be offering. And... Harry just doesn't say anything. Why not? Is there anybody you can tell? Is this guy? Very well, Harry. Piss off. Please don't tell me I have to go through your fucking corridor again. Oh god, I do! I don't know, let's get there and time passes. And it's Christmas! Yep. Merry Christmas from all of us here at Idle Swine Productions. Hogwarts really empties out at Christmas, particularly when there's a large creature slithering about attacking people. Yes, but Malfoy, Crab and Goyle are still here. It's the perfect time to put our plan into effect. We need only one more ingredient for the potion. Bits of Crab and Goyle. Lovely. Locks of their hair, for example. How are we supposed to get their hair? I don't think asking will work. Yes, well done, eh? We give them chocolate cake sprinkled with sleeping potion. When they eat it and fall asleep, you can take some hair. You receive two pointless key items. I, I don't mind slipping them a potion, but can I just say this seems like a terrible waste of chocolate cake. Challenge them to a wizard's duel, because we need to find ways to shoehorn the dueling club into the game some more. If they win, you can give them cake as a reward. If they lose, you give them cake as a consolation prize. Okay, so let's go um, kidnap and lock up two fellow 12-year-olds. Bit excessive now. Okay, so, a Quidditch match, two attacks, and a plot to kidnap two 12-year-olds. Hope that was enough for you in a single episode. I will see you next time.